ChatGPT has been everyone's go-to large language model. Now Meta AI came out with its own large language model called Llama 3.1. Will this be the end of ChatGPT? In this video, I will be talking about the what, why, how of Llama 3.1. I'll be comparing Llama 3.1 with ChatGPT. I will show you how to run Llama 3.1 online as well as locally. Finally, some deployments and applications of Llama 3.1. For code and doc, check out my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So what is Llama 3.1? Llama 3.1 is a large language model, also known as LLM, like ChatGPT. So you could give it a prompt and it'll give you some answers based on your prompt. So here you can see is a user interface that you'll see online, which we'll talk about later on. And then all you need to do is put in your prompt here down below, just like ChatGPT. So here you can see that these are the different models that are available in this table here. So we have different columns, fine-tuned, uh, multilingual, long context, tool use, and release. So if you look on the far left, these are all the different type of models that we have. The numbers here means 8B as in 8 billion parameters, and it goes all the way up to 405 billion. And you'll see that some have instruct and some don't. The ones that have instruct are the ones that have been fine-tuned. And notice that some of the newer 3.1 models are multilingual, whereas the older ones are not. So that's some of the main differences, as well as the long context. And here we have the tool use, you can see that the ones with instruct are the ones that have tool use and have been fine-tuned, whereas the ones that don't have instruct, you see the X's here. So that, that's some of the main differences if you're looking at different model types. So why use Llama 3.1? One of the main things is that it's open source. You can find everything on Hugging Face. You could check out the website down here below at huggingface.com slash meta.llama. So another big reason is for the performance. So if you look at this table here, we have different categories like general, code, math, reasoning, tool use, long context, and multilingual. So these are all of the benchmarks that this LLM have been tested through. And you can see that these are some comparisons between the different types of LLMs out there, like you have the Gemma and the Mistral, and then you have the GPT 3.5, you have the GPT 4 and the 4.0 and Claude. These are all some of the pretty new ones that came out. But you can see here the biggest model here, 405 billion parameters. It has a lot of scores in the high 80s as well as 90s. So it's pretty much on par with uh, ChatGPT as you can see here. And in some cases, it actually even does a little bit better. So later on, we'll be seeing some actual performance differences between the two. So hang in there and we'll check it out. So here is another comparison. This gives you a bigger overview of the differences. So you can see here that this is a Llama 3.1 versus a GPT-4. And you can see that in the dark blue is a win and in the uh, yellow or tan color is a loss. So you can see here is about 23% versus 24%. So they're pretty close. Here is comparing the 4.0. You can see it's a 19% versus 29. So here it kind of lost a little bit, but still it's only by about 10%. So it's still pretty good. And if you see it compared to the Sonnet uh, from Claude, we have about pretty much the same, so 24 to 24. So you can see that compared to the existing ones out there like ChatGPT4, it's definitely up, up there in terms of performance. So how does Llama 3.1 work? You can see this is the over architecture diagram of some of the ways the inputs and outputs are structured. So from the input, you have your text uh, tokens, which is usually your prompt, and then all of that gets embedded. Then it gets passed through a series of self-attention and feed for network block diagrams here. And the dot dot means that there's more of them. And then finally, it has the output text token, which is the answer to your prompt. But Throughout this whole process, there's a feedback loop that has an auto-regressive decoding that happens, which passes back to the input and kind of helps aid some of the training process. So let's take a look at the Llama 3.1 versus ChatGPT. Right now, I'm using the free version, but sometimes it gives me some uh, free usage for the 401. So here, I'm asking it a coding test. I wrote 
uh, write code to track a ball in as few lines as possible with no comments. So if you look on the left, it's a response from ChatGPT. You see that here, uh, what it does is it takes into account some, it does a typical like HSV and it has some masking that it does. And if you're new to OpenCV, I have a playlist on it. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, but here you see that it finds a contour. It checks if there's a contour. And if it finds a contour, what it does is it finds the number. It checks for the radius if it's bigger than something. And then once it does that, it plots it using the typical OpenCV commands. And if we take a look at the meta version, so the Llama 3.1, uh, notice the uh, same things that it does here is that it also converts to HSV and then it also finds a mask, but it seems to use it directly from the mask without any sort of uh, contour finding or any other further image processing techniques. So I would say that the output from Meta seems to be a little bit more basic and the one from ChatGPT seems, seems to be considering a few more things, but Overall, I would say it gives you the basic code to start doing some initial tracking. And here, now let's take a look at some creative writing. So I'm going to say, write poem to ask a girl out. So here it says, a day with you in a world of endless possibilities, there's one that shines so bright. It's spending time with someone sweet and that someone feels just right. So you see a little bit of rhyming going on here, which is pretty nice. And then, I've thought of ways to say this, but simple words will do. Would you like to share a day with just me and you? A walk, a chat, a laugh or two, perhaps a meal or coffee too. No matter what we choose to do, I'm hoping I'll be there with you. So here's a question clear and true. Would you like to spend a day, just you and me, with time to share in our own sweet, simple way? Okay, so that's from ChatGPT. And now let's hear how it sounds from Meta. So here's the one from Meta. It says, a spark in my heart, a smile so bright, every time I see you, my day takes flight. So you can see there's also some rhyming going on. Your laughter echoes a joyous sound. I long to be near you to hold your hand around. Will you take a chance and go out with me? Let's create some memories, just wait and see. A walk under stars, a coffee in town, together forever, our hearts spinning around. So let me know with a smile or a sigh if you'll be my partner and give love a try. I promise to cherish, to support, and adore forever and always my love for you in store. So I'd say both sound pretty good, pretty corny. Um, leave a comment down below to tell me which one's the winner. And here's another competition between the two, but now it's in math. So here I ask it a pretty basic question. Show me the derivation for linear regression using linear algebra, just show the equations. And you can see that here we have the formula in the ax equals to b form as we expect in linear algebra. And then you can see here that it defines the error, has a cost function, expands the cost function, take the derivative, and then solves for the solution. And on the right here, this is the output from meta. You can see that the first equation seems to be similar, uh, but here it jumps straight to this equation, which is a cost function, uh, writes it in a slightly different form. But overall, you can see that once it takes a derivative, you can see that here uh, it doesn't factor it out, but it's essentially the same equation as you can see here. And then once it expands it, you get this equation, and finally you have the output. Notice here that I've asked for only the equation, so I would say Meta followed uh, more closely to my instructions. But for ChatGPT to give you some of the you know numbers and short description of what's going on can help the reader read what's going on. So both outputs are correct, um, but it depends on how you want to judge it. I would say the Meta one more closely does what I asked for, but what ChatGPT assumes the user wants is a nice addition. Okay, so if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you're here in this video this far. Okay, so how do you run Llama 3.1 online? So it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and go to the meta.ai website, and then that's all you need to do. You could log in if you want to, or you could use the version where you don't have to log in, but the only thing is it's not going to track some of the previous search results that you've done. So if you want to look back to your queries, then you may want to log in. And then once you go to the website, you just put your prompt in down here, and then you could get it up and going. 
And this right here are just some recommendations on what you can ask it to do. So if you want to run it locally on Windows, then what you want to do is you want to describe your prompt here inside of messages. So here I said, you are my personal business advisor. Give me a business strategy to grow my YouTube channel. And then here you can see that it gave me an output. And again, I'm using the 8 billion parameter model. Um, you might have some challenges running this if you have a pretty weak PC and GPU. So there's cloud versions available if you want to use that if your computer is too weak to run it locally. So if you want to see how I did this, I have some step-by-step -step instructions on how to run it and set it up on Windows. Some of the stuff online is pretty scattered, so I put it all together for easier um, rules and steps to follow so that you don't get lost. And if you're considering using a stronger GPU, which you don't have, you could consider some deploying options such as like AWS, you have like Databricks, Dell, Nvidia, Grok, and so on. So this chart here shows you some of the main differences. So you can see they look at things like real-time inference capability. I would say that's like the main thing. And then you have things like batch inference, fine-tuning, model evaluation, model base, knowledge base, uh, continual pre-training, safety, guardrails, synthetic data generation, and distillation recipes. So go ahead and see which um, part that's important to your process. Maybe you just want to do inference. Maybe you want to actually do fine tuning. So based on your exact requirements, choose the solution that works for you. And let's take a look at some applications you could use with Llama 3.1. If you're someone that's trying to integrate uh, LLM into your business, you could take a look at these are some of the current applications out there under consumer, healthcare, tech, and education industries. So Short Hills AI is a company out there that analyzes customer reviews to provide advice on products. You have the Open Bio LLM, which is pretty much an LLM for the medical field. So there's a lot of terminologies out there that's very medical specific. You have Ninja Tech AI. This is an AI agent that's good for things like reinforcement learning. You have copy.ai. This is something that's used for content generation. You have Transcripta Bio, which discover and predicts effects of new drugs. And then lastly, you have the Erevihan. I don't know how you pronounce that. But what this one does is automated online learning, and it generates text response and lecture scripts for you. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.